Kelly Hoppen is one of Britain's leading interior designers. Kelly's got a really unique style. It's very simple, but very tasteful. I'd love to get myself a Kelly Hoppen house. She is a phenomenon. Kelly has been designing interiors for over 30 years, and in that time, she's successfully created stylish homes and businesses for some of the most glamorous and demanding people in the world. When I design a room, I really want it to reflect the personality of the people living in it. Good taste is a room you feel comfortable in. But now she wants to use her expertise to fix bad taste and design disasters all across the UK. Not everyone has taste, that's for sure. But I want to show people that good design can be achieved with a very small budget. And when you get it right, it can actually improve your life. Tonight, Kelly helps a family transform a dingy, crammed garage into a multifunctional family living space. We've got a huge job on our hands to get rid of all of this crap. Things between Vince and I are stressful. That's not going to sit flush against the wall. It will. You want a bar and you want the chair. She's got her opinion, I've got mine. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Oh, my God. Kelly Hoppen's mission is to tackle bad taste and improve interiors all over the world. I want to change the way we live today with some simple golden rules anyone can use. When Kelly creates a room, she thinks as much about the people who live there as the look they want to achieve. This week, Kelly's off to Chesant, Hertfordshire to convert a junk-filled garage into a beautiful family living room. Before Kelly starts the garage conversion, she has some golden rules. When you're doing a garage conversion, it's very important that you have all the drawings and you stick to everything that you're going to do because it's a small space, you have to fit an awful lot into it, and you've also got to budget it well. The Anglo-Italian Di Martino family, Teresa, Vince, Amy, 14, and 10-year-old Michael, have a garage bursting with clutter. There's the electrics unit, a disused train set, boxes of rubbish, and round in the corner, there's even a makeshift laundry. Being only 15 square metres, Teresa and Vince have a big list of ideas for their little living room. And that includes a specific theme. My parents are from Sicily, and um, one of my passions is uh, programmes of Sopranos and The Godfather. I just enjoy that whole kind of Sicilian New York thing. What we like to do is bring in a bit of New York, a bit of Little Italy, and that kind of thing to the project as well. Deep walnut or oak and reds and mirror tiles. I've got a little picture up here what I want to do. It's for the family, Kelly. But their most important request is for their 10-year-old son, Michael, who has learning difficulties. Buses. What we'd really like to do is to put an interactive whiteboard in, um, predominantly for my son's use, because that's what he uses at school, so everything is touch screen, which is so much easier for him. The Di Martinos are out this morning, so Kelly's got a chance to have a sneaky peek at the design challenge she'll be dealing with. Oh, this is why I do what I do. I love this. Rip it all apart and start again. This is a perfect example of how people store junk. I always say if you've got something in a storeroom and you never use it, it's because you're never going to use it. But it's just piled up with stuff. And I bet you if we sat down and went through most of it, it's all things from early childhood, things they never used. So we've got a huge job on our hands to get rid of all of this crap. Whilst the garage is dark and dingy, outside it's party time. Oh my word, this is worth coming here for just this. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. 
I have never seen anything like it in my entire life. Where is my drink? I've been sitting here for 10 minutes. Lousy bar. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. You all right? Yeah, very good, thank you. Well, this is exciting. Do you like it? I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest. <laughs> Kelly always gets to know her clients before starting work, and she wants to get to the bottom of why the DiMartinos need her expertise. So obviously this room that we're going to create coming off the kitchen into the garage is very important for you as a family, but because of Mikey, to have a space where presumably it could possibly be a room for him as he grows older. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a little place for him to go to, family-friendly and safe. Yes. Yeah, it is difficult. He was diagnosed, I suppose, at about six and a half to seven months, and they said that the outlook was extremely bleak. How did you cope with that at the time? Um, I spent the first few days just sobbing my heart out, as any normal mother would. I picked myself up off the floor with the support of my husband and decided, you know, he's, well, he's still my flesh and blood. Yeah, you know, he's still my son. Him. You've just got to get on with it. With the garage being only 15 square metres, Kelly's keen to get an idea of what will work in the space. Right. So I noticed you've got a utility area over here. Do we have to keep that in this room? Some of it. There's, there's nowhere else in the house that we can put it? No, not without creating a major, major upheaval. I mean, I'm going to have to sort of mask it in the best that I can, but I think I think we can do it. That's fine. And I hear you want a bar in here as well. If possible. Another, yes. another bar. Another bar. If possible. It's not uh, an essential, but for me, for my, uh, my background, I, I love the Italian feel thing, so if you can incorporate that in, in, in the bar area, possibly. As long as it's not like a theme park, so we're no. sort of turning it into something which is a bit naff, mm. then I'm happy to sort of make it feel a bit sort of, you know, Frank Sinatra, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Then I've got an idea how to do that. Whilst Kelly has the ideas, Vince will be right up against it as he's doing all the building work on Teresa's strict budget of 13,000 and all in less than eight weeks. There's a few problems here in the house. They love their themes. I mean, they've got this Tahitian bar, they've got the little Marbella area with the fountain coming down. I don't want to bring that into that room, but I'm going to have to. I'm going to try and do it in the most stylish way that I can. And I kind of get the feeling that they're going to be quite excited about me doing that. Let's hope. Coming up, Mom Teresa suffers the pitfalls of living on site. Dusty. Builders. <laughs> this week, Kelly's helping the DiMartinos convert their junk-filled garage with a strict £13,000 budget. Back at her London studio, Kelly talks to her design team about her vision for the family's garage. So I've just come back from the DiMartinos and it's a very difficult project because we've got to get so many different things into this really small area which is now their garage so the theme they want is sort of new york italian mafia you know which is slightly worrying because how do you create that so i think the only thing that we can do is maybe use some photography of new york and things without making it too themed or tacky or tacky so this is the, the main kitchen. This is where you come in. So this is now the garage. So we knock this wall down. They want to put these sort of bifold doors here, which I'm concerned about because it's going to eat into the room. This is the best place for them to have their utility room. This is where the bar would go, but then it would go up against the wall. And then this would be their sort of seating, chilling area, coffee table, and then this whole wall. And They've got to have their smart board for Mikey and then these nice units. Where the garage door is now, we'll open this up and we'll put a window in. So that's going to draw light right the way through. Then with this door here, which is actually going to be in glass, it will feel a lot bigger. These are all the colours, so nice wallpaper. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. The stripes will elongate it so it feels like the ceiling's higher. Yeah, it's because it's, low it's low there, there. exactly. This would be the colour of the floor. The idea of having sort of very light colours, but bringing in red, because they love red, they've got so much of it in their home, it will feel a lot bigger. But it's still going to be a massive challenge for us to put all of this in. 
The next step in Kelly's design process is to inspire the DiMartinos with a visit to a multifunctional space. This seemingly ordinary South London home hides a treasure trove for kids, big and small, in its basement. So, the reason why I've brought you here is to show you a multifunctional space. This did not exist before. This was underground. Your garage was a garage. It's now going to be a multifunctional space. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's really, really good. Really nice. Kelly's first rule for design is to always combine style with practicality. And so, in this basement, the children's zones are in white, whilst the parents' area is highlighted by one bright colour. Look over here and your dream come true. A bar, what's more, a red bar. A very red bar. Right. It's but it's perfect. multifunctional. It's got a dishwasher, it's got a sink, it's got a microwave. I mean, it's like a mini kitchen. We've got to please everybody in a much smaller space. Mm -hmm. But if we can build what we're talking about, which is, you know, a console table that you can pull out, yep. you're going to create the idea of having a bar, but it's also then going to be pushed to one side, and that is a space for the kids and you. It's just fabulous. I mean, I love... I love this red. <laughs> that is... That's me to a T. I love this. By placing the football table in the centre of the room, it becomes a star piece, an item that demands attention both aesthetically and practically. <laughs> but that's not all. So this, for me, is what it's all about. Five kids, an indoor sports room, table tennis, cricket, football, and those doors over there close and it's squash. Oh, my God. Oh, it's coming home at the end of the day, and may I would take your aggression on... <laughs> yeah, normally it's out on me, but... Yeah. I think we'll dig one of these and put a squash ball in. <laughs> so, do you feel really inspired now that you've seen what's possible? Oh, totally. This is... Absolutely. ...incredible, what they've done. Absolutely incredible. It's very, very You know, incredible. for me, this is what's impressive. It's just the use of space. Mm, definitely. And, you know, really thinking about family, and yeah. that's what you've done. We've thought about everything. It's a much, much smaller space, but everyone's got to be happy. So, do you want a game of table tennis now? <laughs> this indoor sports area is perfect for children's games, but it's been designed with the future in mind. Once the kids have grown up, it can easily be reconverted into, well, whatever they want, at little cost. I think that was really good that we came here and showed them that it doesn't matter how much money you have, it's the same objective. It was a space that was never used, the same as their garage, and it was for family. That visit was amazing, completely inspirational. The space is much bigger than what we've got, but I think we can create what we're looking to do in the space that we've got. Two days after her initial meeting with the DiMartinos, Kelly heads back to their Chesant home, armed with her concept for their garage conversion. I'm back to show Vince and Teresa the plans that I've done for their garage, and I'm really confident that it's going to look great. But I have one big concern, that the building work is going to cost much more money than we all think, which is going to leave very little for me to do the inside. So I'm going to just talk you through the plans, and I'll show you where everything can fit. Kelly's master plan for converting the DiMartino's garage has been designed around the family's multifunctional needs. All the garage's contents will be removed and either stored, sold off or thrown away. Be furnished to include a sofa with side and coffee table, an interactive whiteboard for Michael and, for the wow factor, a bespoke retractable bar for Teresa and Vince. Kelly will also reconfigure the utility area to include multiple white goods. And finally, to maximise the natural light, Kelly will replace the garage door with a set of windows and demolish the adjoining kitchen wall, substituting it for bifold doors. Do you think the bifold doors are the way to go? I'm really very keen on the doors. I think the whole beauty of this is that you're going to end up with a massive room. The animals stay in the kitchen. We would like to keep that close. The animals don't go into the new section. You're not talking about your children at this point. <laughs> I'm talking about, yeah. So 
The idea of having this bar that kind of opens up, so I thought it would be quite good because then you could put your glasses and mixers and everything else. But it's not an incredibly heavy piece of furniture, so you could move it with two people up against the wall. And when you were having a party or something, you could bring it out. Happy with the bar, Mafia Mad Vince is keen for Kelly to include an Italian theme. We could have a glass splash pad with glass shelves in there, possibly. Or red. red glass. <laughs> no <laughs> bloody way. I am not having red glass no, there. No. 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 Oh my black god. Glass. I'd rather not make this so themed. I'd rather not have red glass and flashing lights. <laughs> disco ball. Disco yeah. ball. Actually, I love disco balls. Yeah, so I don't do mind I, that. <laughs> so, what do you feel initially? Overwhelmed. Oh, are you? Yeah, completely overwhelmed. I mean, it just looks fabulous. I'm just. My head is about to explode, I think. Yeah, I'm really happy with the whole of design. With Kelly's designs approved, she now needs to know how much of the small £13,000 budget she will have for her vision. So do you have any idea of what your side is going to cost? I've done a rough calculation and I'm looking at the moment around about the 7000 Whoa. Yeah, unfortunately, new uh, double glazed window at the front, the wall. Still work. Do you care about the noise? <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I've gone to the most inexpensive stores that I can find that will give you furniture which is going to last. I know that you're not marking up what you're doing because no, it's your business, but I think we're going to have to pull in some favours along the way if we can. I can try. Despite Vince agreeing to graft hard at cost price, it now leaves Kelly with only five grand and a concern as to whether she can do it to her high standards. They are the two of the most wonderful people, but there is a problem there with money, and I want to be able to do the whole room. I don't want to install half of it and say this is what it could be like. Got it? Over there. Oh, my God! Where are you going? You said over there. Over there? Over there. As Teresa and Vince are cash-strapped, they need to scrape together as much money as possible. So they've decided to try and sell the contents of their garage at a car boot sale. Five pounds. Thank you, friends. kind sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. That's lovely. It's gone really well, actually, uh, today. We sold quite a bit. All the money we've uh, made will pay for things like curtains and cushions and the silly stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Right. Put it in my pot, honey. Put it in my Kelly bag. It's the first day of the Di Martino's eight-week schedule, and Vince is finally getting to grips with what he considers the real work. This is the most important part of the uh, of the project, I think, the actual construction, not the cushions and soft fabrics of Kelly's side of it. And this is where the real work takes place. Right, here we go. Unfortunately, none of it gets seen it'll all be covered with her um, wallpaper and uh, fabrics. Vince's Italian-American bravado doesn't get me. He thinks he's doing all the hard work, but I can tell you now that without the stuff that I put in, it's going to look nothing. But look at the Sistine Chapel. Nobody ever talks about the plaster. It's all about Michelangelo. Oh, my God. And by day four of the building work, Teresa's up to her eyes in it. Dust. I'm a bit house proud, so all the dust and the disruption is all a little bit sort of above me, and I'm struggling to deal with that. But I'm trying to keep the dishwasher going, the washing machine on, and the kettle boiling, and the cooker going all at the same time. But I'm sure I'll manage somehow. <laughs> It must be frustrating for Teresa not being in control and me taking over a little bit. Once she sees the finished product, I think she'll be happy. My kitchen is filthy. I'm trying so hard to keep it clean. The dust is everywhere. See if you can write Vince over here. Dusty. In the first week, Vince and his team have discarded junk, demolished walls, 
and erected the new surround for the bay window. Coming up, it's decision time, but Vince and Teresa's indecision pushes them to breaking point. Have you thought any more about the dining room table and chairs? This week, Kelly's helping the DiMartinos convert their junk-filled garage on a budget of £13,000. It's only six days into the DiMartinos' eight-week schedule and Kelly has come back to check on how Vince's building work is progressing. Whoa, this is so exciting. This is the bit that I love. They've clearly got rid of all the junk that was in the garage and I can see over here that they've actually taken the window out. It's five, six days since I've been here and they're on it, so I'm thrilled. Having worked so incredibly hard in such a short space of time, Kelly's impressed, but also concerned. You both look exhausted, this is... stressed. Well, it's to be expected, I suppose. What about the flooring? I hear you've had some thoughts on that. Well, there's a bit of a debate on the floor at the moment. I'm kind of... I, I like the idea of having wooden flooring in here. I actually like what you've got, which is the the timber yeah. as opposed to out in the hallway. So to create that whole length excellent, excellent. space. So Well it depends on what how much it is a square metre. I'm up for it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you would be. I thought you would be. Someone help me. <laughs> I, need a, I need another man here to defend me. Now Kelly wants to know how her plans for lighting are working out. I was thinking of uh, putting in ceiling spotlights like we've got in the kitchen. So you ceiling don't spotlights. like the idea of the... I'm ones. not... I'm just very sort of anti those kind of spots that go in the ceiling. They've sort of been done a million times. Mm. Could we maybe have a compromise where we do the two? Well, that, that wouldn't go. I mean, I know that it's so normal that you do what you're used to, yeah. but the fact that I'm here and we've got the opportunity, why don't you just try something different? If you're not keen on it, then go with what you're used to, and I'll sulk heavily. <laughs> Kelly's made her views about lighting crystal clear, but on the flooring, she senses a battle of the sexes is looming. I've got a funny feeling that he doesn't want the dark wood floor. She does, I do, so I, there might be a bit of a battle there. I'm on my own here and uh, I've got no one to defend me and uh, she's, you know, they're both uh, gunning for me at the moment. Kelly and I gang up on Vince, never, not in a million years. <laughs> do what you have to do, don't you? So. With the building works consuming the majority of the DiMartino's budget, Kelly's keen to ensure they buy their accessories wisely, so today she's whetting their appetite by taking them to a home accessory store to teach them how to accessorise and dress their new space. Your task for the day is to wander around the shop, find some great accessories, and I want you to dress this how you would like to have it at home. OK. The shop is yours. Right. Yes. Right, let's go over here. Oh, God. That's just mad, this thing. I don't know who would have that in their home. <whistles> Lovely. I think it'll look good on the, on the unit. I think a contrast, black and white. A bit of a Sopranos thing here, a revolver. That might be nice. One of the most difficult things for people is actually dressing and accessorising their home. Um, for me, I've kind of scanned the shop. I know what I would use in my head, but for people that are not used to doing it, it's really, really hard. I like that. I really like this. I do like these. I really like that, and I also like that vase. Oh, and it's on sale. We sold. With the accessories collected, it's on to step two of dressing the shelf. All right, one of you start. Come on, Vince, you start. Well, I chose what I thought Michael would like as well. He's really into his vehicle, so I picked up the, the little Vespa. That's really nice, actually. I hadn't thought of that. And also, good old British Mini. I love that. Vince has selected a few the items, revolver. so his placement is quick and decisive. I'm impressed, Vince. I'm quite impressed, too. I did pick up 
this. And pop that between those two. I picked out these. Teresa, however, grabbed as many varied items as possible. I really like this as well. <laughs> I can make up my You're mind. You're going to have to build a new house. I know I can't have it all. And so now struggles to balance the aesthetics of the shelf. This looks like we're going to ask it. I like this. I don't know if it goes on this shelf, though, to be honest with you. Put it up there and let's have a look. <laughs> now the shelf is dressed, Kelly explains a few of her golden rules. Generally speaking, I tend to do things in rows of three or two. Things that are at the top, that's not where you would put them. Right. This is a really beautiful piece, but you almost want it in your eye line. OK. A good rule is to start with something of height to the left of a shelf, OK? I would never normally put anything up here because what you want to do is draw your eye to this. So this is basically the bit that's important. I generally do picture frames straight on, especially if your shelves are there and, you know, your sofa's going to be here and you'd be looking at it. So it's not really so much what you choose, it's the way you actually place it. That's how you actually layer a shelf. It's week four of the DiMartino's eight-week garage conversion. With the budget stretched and Vince a keen photographer, Kelly and Teresa have come up with a cost-saving idea that has an Italian-American theme. So I got an email and Teresa sent me all these images that are Vince's, which are actually really fantastic. He really wants to have some kind of mafiosa-type pictures up in the room. So we've gone and got some frames just off the high street and we're putting them together and they're going to look fantastic on that back wall where the wallpaper is. The thing is, I absolutely love black and white photography and it doesn't matter what size your frames are. The whole purpose of actually doing something like this is to have like a montage. So by getting lots of frames, they don't all have to be the same size because we'll just position them on the wall so they'll really work well. The only way it works with a frame this size is to have a lot of them, because if you just have one, it'll get lost on the wall. But with all of these five, it will look really good. OK. Messy, never. I know, he's messy. It's five weeks into the garage conversion. The walls have been plastered, the windows inserted, and builder Vince has worked extremely hard. But the long hours are taking their toll on the family. There's a lot of pressure on us at the moment, obviously running the, the household with, you know, with Michael. That's pressure on its own, and having the build in the middle of it as well. Well, the bar... What were we saying, 1,200, wasn't it? Yeah, but it doesn't go from there, Vince, does it? Because the door's got to be folding back. 1,200, is it? It will work. It's stressful not agreeing, cos I don't want to do it wrong. Yeah, you didn't like my cubes. I didn't like it's, the way... Which Kelly really liked. No, but she also said the same as me. She didn't like the way they were positioned. She just said she would position them differently. Oh, there you go, then. That, to me, that's not liking them. She's got her opinion, I've got mine. And they're not just not coming together at the moment. They can't agree on what pieces of furniture go where, and Builder Vince is clearly out of his comfort zone. Have you thought any more about the dining room table and chairs? Mm. So it's down to me then to decide. Yep. Cheers, huh? Okay, you. I'll put the cable in for the light. It's as far as I'm going on the uh, dining room table. One week later, and there's still no progress. So Kelly decides to take control. How stressed are you on a scale of one to ten, honestly? On the build side of things, one. Okay. Uh, but on the design side of it, it's probably about an eight. OK. Do you think it's because I'm here that you feel under pressure? Well, it, <laughs> it, it doesn't... Yeah, absolutely. It does put a bit more pressure on that uh, you're here and cracking the whip. It's always been one of the hardest things that we've always had to come over. You know, decision-making, choosing the right items for the room. You seem totally in control of the build side of it, but it seems like you both have a problem making decisions on everything that's going into the space. At the moment, I don't feel like I'm breathing. <laughs> I think once those decisions are made, I will start breathing again. I'm here to help you. Mm. So rather than feeling pressurised, then let's work it out together. OK. 
because that's what I'm here to help you with. No, so definitely. I think let's try and make that a one instead of an eight. Cool. Thanks, okay. Molly. Teresa and Vince are so stressed, they forgot one family member. So now they want to alter Kelly's design. Since the last time we spoke, um, we've got a little concern in that we really want to do something for Amy as well as Michael, obviously. And she is really keen on these ball chairs, bubble chairs. Every child wants one of these chairs, whether it's suspended or on the ground. The problem is you want a bar and you want the chair, it's going to be really difficult to fit both in. If you can imagine walking into that room, what you're going to see is the back of that chair. I'm okay. not sure that you're going to be happy. Well, I'll be prepared to lose the bar for the chair for, for, for Amy. 100%, no problems there at all. But even if we move this up, this has got to have enough space to breathe. Yeah. So the only thing that we could do, possibly, is if you can make that shape uh -huh. and put it in the room and we can mask and take this out, it's always a good way to see how things visually look in a space. Definitely. I don't want you to give up your bar either. That's the problem. I don't want us to give up the bar. But if it's for the kids, then I'll, I'll quite happily give it up for, for them. We'll Definitely. just get you some shakers. That's it. <laughs> just a couple of shelves and some shakers and I'll be happy. <laughs> One way to solve Teresa and Vince's design dilemma is to imagine their new space as different zones, as Kelly demonstrates in her own home. When designing a home, it's so important to understand actually how you live in it, and I call that zoning. So here I have part of the kitchen. The entrance hall was the first. This is now the second zone. When people come into my home, I can never get them out of here because this is where you're cooking, you can sit down, you can make cocktails. Part of this zone then goes into the main kitchen. So this is now the second phase. What most people tend to do is actually put a kitchen island in the middle of the main part, but I decided to put it over there because I wanted to create the wow factor. And that's what zoning's all about, is creating lots of modules in one space. So from the main kitchen, I come into my dining room and I've created another pod, if you like, here by having this arch. I'm part of the kitchen, but I'm not. Here I can entertain people away from the kitchen, but equally, I have another doorway here so I can zone off this part of the house. It's the last week, and with four days to go, Vince has lost the battle of the floorboards, and he finally gets to install the bifold doors to separate the kitchen from the new space. <laughs> Kelly has called a site meeting because she thinks zoning will be the answer to Teresa and Vince's arguing. Wow, what a difference! Like Are you over the moon? You know what's so amazing is that it just, when you walk in, it just makes the kitchen feel so much bigger. Yeah, it does. It, it does open right up. It looks lovely. You've worked really hard. <laughs> Thank you. Really, okay. really hard, honestly. Well impressed. Do you know what I would love to do? Because I know that you guys have been cutting out all the sofa size and table and everything else. Put them in the room because I am still concerned about the bubble chair sort of taking up too much of the space. Let's start with the sofa. sofa. I wish it was as easy as that. Yes, here's the sofa. <laughs> no delivery man required. <laughs> Placing paper cutouts of your furniture is a great way to check the zoning in your multifunctional space. I mean, this looks OK here, but in reality, when it's up, it's a big expanse. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to see when you walk in. And the beauty of what we've got now is it feels very airy and open. In the newly zoned room, Kelly suggests moving the bubble chair, but Teresa isn't convinced. My concern with the chair being over there is that if Amy's in here watching film or something on the, on the interactive whiteboard, she's going to be restricted over there from a viewing point of view. Just practically speaking, this room will work better by having this chair here, because when you walk in, you don't have to move your bar. It's in the corner. Amy can still go on and swivel around. It's a star piece. Kelly leaves the DiMartinos, hoping they will take her advice and finally get on and order the remaining furnishings. I feel much happier today, um, having seen it 
all laid out. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm much, much happier. I just want to get on an order and everything and get it all in place. Coming up, Kelly can't wait to try out Vince's new bar. Where are the drinks? And Teresa finally gets the room of her dreams. It looks amazing. I have to say, I, I could cry. The Di Martino's eight-week garage conversion is nearly complete. And with only three days until the family party, Mikey's interactive whiteboard is finally installed and ready for him to start enjoying. What are we going to do now? It's the final day and Kelly's back. She's turfed out Teresa and Vince so she can dress the space undisturbed. Kelly has introduced hints of Teresa's favourite colour, red, to soften the masculine feel of the monochrome scheme. The clever layout of furniture actually makes the small room appear larger. Vince's framed photos of New York hint at an Italian-American theme and his chrome accessory adds a little bling. Just eight weeks ago, this dark and dingy garage was stuffed high with boxes of junk and housed a grubby utility area. Now Kelly's transformed it into a stunning multifunctional space, a recreational zone for the children and a custom-made retractable bar sure to be the focus of every family and friends get-together. What do you think? Oh, my God. Wow. That's transformed it. I love the way all the colours work together, the whole taupe, neutral colours, the cushions, but then contrasting it with all the black. And there's a bit of red in there, I like the red. Um, it's just amazing. It's opened up so much, the kitchen, which before seemed much, much smaller. Now you've kind of got the glass table, so it's kind of see-through. It's a lot of space. And you look through, I'm sort of breathless. There's so many things going on in that tiny little space. Mm -hmm. But it really looks great. You've got everything that we ask for and more. It looks amazing. I have to say, I, I could cry. Oh, oh, I could really do cry. you want thank, to go in and have a look? Thank have you. a good old snoop Yeah, I'd love round. to. I'd love to. Come yeah, I'd love to. Their utility area was a ghastly mess with a grubby worktop, an old sink, tired white goods and a distinct lack of lighting. It's now transformed with the black glass fridge freezer matching the lacquered units which discreetly conceal the laundry's white goods. So here is your washing machine and dryer. Oh, very clever. Very, very clever indeed. Thanks to your husband. Yeah, very nicely done. Then here's your fridge freezer. Lovely. Coffee machine. Fabulous. Storage. It uh, works. It does. Yes. It really, really works. So I've heard all about this bar and the drinks. Where are the drinks? Wait one sec. How does it work? Oh, this. This actually really works. I mean, you were worried about the space and everything here, but this moving out on wheels is really very, very clever. I honestly have these visions of you doing your laundry. <laughs> this is going on. You're like, every woman's going to be absolutely, like, so jealous and envious of this. Their cluttered garage was previously separated from the kitchen by an unsightly wall, but it's now been demolished, opening up the entire space. Vince took Kelly's lighting advice and installed movable spotlights, ensuring each zone is specifically lit. And finally, Mikey's interactive whiteboard and Amy's bubble chair fit snugly into the space. This looks so incredibly light where the garage door used to be. Yep. Fantastic light all the way through. Do you remember that you wanted this sort of Italian-American theme? Did you see what we did with your pictures? And they absolutely look fantastic. I was really impressed how good you were. I wasn't expecting that kind of picture. I told you he was good. I know, but you could do a lot more. You could put more pictures up here. It'd look great. Yeah. 
I think one of the main things for me on this and the worry mm. wasn't kind of getting the design, it was really that the budget was small to get as many things as we needed into this room. I think we started off, was it 13,000? And 7,000 of that was for the building works, which was a big chunk of the 13,000. So how did we fare in the end? I pulled in lots of favours from all my contacts in the building trade and got things at uh, reduced prices. So that's how we kept it down. You'll be maybe pleased to know that we're two grand under budget. Wow. <laughs> There's a first. So, <laughs> I was going to say, that's a first for me. <laughs> <laughs> the Di Martinos are blown away by Kelly's multifunctional space. But will Mikey's friends give it the thumbs up? And after eight weeks, Yay. Kelly we finally go. gets that drink. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Well done. Cheers. Cheers. Generally, special needs can be very isolating, and to be able to bring your buddies round and sit and play in a room like this, they'd just be like any other normal children, which will just be amazing. I think they will make the most of this space because they're very good at entertaining. Very good. Really nice, simple, elegant, and really funky. I love it. Kelly, we'd like to say thank you so much for your hard work, your inspirations, and just for creating such a fabulous room for our family. Oh, so thank it's you. a pleasure. Thank you oh. so much. You have both been an absolute joy to work with. It's been an emotional roller coaster, lots of stresses and strains, as there is with any building project along the way. But um, it's just, it's, it's, the end result is perfect and I couldn't ask for a more perfect room and, you know, Kelly's input, just the whole thing has been amazing. This has been an incredibly moving makeover for me because of the fact that the room had to be so multifunctional and to see Mikey playing there with all his friends today really was quite emotional. <laughs> You've got a multifunctional space. We put it on time. We've done it within budget, under budget, in fact. Everyone's really happy. They're still in there now, all partying. I'm going to leave them to it. I'm off. Next week, Kelly mends a broken heart by transforming a feisty family's ramshackle kitchen. What I like, I can never have. What he likes, that's it. I'm pissed off and fed up. I've been in this business for many, many years. If you're told it's happening Monday, it happens Friday. <laughs>